Thank you so much for allowing me to be on this call. It is my absolutely privilege and honor to be alongside a huge icon at the Lord of the Thank you, Carla, for changing my life. It is my absolute privilege to receive this award during this time for an organization that has built me from deep inside. I feel the same way. I feel very honored. Thank you very much uh, for making, uh, giving us this opportunity to have this wonderful conversation. Thank you so much. So I guess we can get started. Uh, one more time, thank you so much for allowing me to interview you. It is my absolute privilege. And I really want you to know that you are a huge inspiration for lots of Girl Up leaders. You've been an organizer for 60 years. You led and are still leading lots of movements. You've been arrested 12 times. What kept you going? What motivates you? And more specifically, looking back, where is one of your biggest accomplishments? Well, I, I think what keeps me going is probably the same thing that keeps you going, is we know that we have a lot of uh, young women out there and people in general uh, that need to be, we, we want to organize them to become activists, uh, to have them join us in a social justice, racial justice, economic justice movement, because we know that, I love to say this, that uh, the power is in the people, the, the power is in people's person. And, but once that they understand this, and that's basically what we do as organizers, is uh, getting them to understand that they actually have the power to make changes. So the more people that we can reach, the more people that we can, uh, you know, get them get them motivated, then I think that that is such a wonderful, wonderful feeling when you know that someone has been enlightened to the point that they are willing to uh, take uh, the, the precious resource that they have, which is their time, but to commit their time uh, to help uh, organize and to reach other people uh, so that we can uh, make the world a better place. Because ultimately, I think that is our goal. We want a just and a peaceful world, but we have to really motivate people to know that, to let them know that they can achieve it. So, Rim, in your young career, you've already made huge strides in inspiring your peers to take action and to get involved in fighting for their civil rights, even when it isn't easy. So what drives you to do the work that you do and to stand up for those people that are living in marginalized communities and that really need a lot of help and people that have been denied civil rights? Um, going into activism really comes from, from the privilege I have. I know that I am extremely privileged to have a supportive family, to have the resources, to have a supportive school. I was able to know that things are going wrong and I need to do something. But this is unfortunately, is not the case in the Arab region. And so what keeps me going is the fact that I need to use my privilege for other girls because my case shouldn't be in common. Every girl should know that her voice matters and that she can do lots of lots of things. Now, I would ask you a question that is extremely dear to my heart. What does it mean to be a feminist and also a woman of color? Well, I will quote uh, Coretta Scott King, Dr. Martin Luther King's widow, who once, she once said this, we will never have peace in the world until women take power. And I have changed that to say feminists take power, okay? <laughs> Make it a little bit different because then we can include some of the men that really support women and support women's reproductive rights and, and uh, all of the issues, of course, that we know that women fight for. I think it's a, extremely important uh, for us to promote uh, feminism among women uh, so that women can really uh, feel the sense of their true power. And we know, again, as women of color, that we're still playing catch up because uh, women of color, of course, are still very much discriminated in the United States of America. And I might say around the world, uh, one of the, the things about the racial justice movement is that we won't, do want to get rid of the whole issue of, of, uh, of skin color uh, to make understand that we are all equal, we're all human beings. And one of my mantras uh, that I like to promote, and I'll share it with you, uh, because I know that you would understand, Rim. And what I like to say to folks is that we are only one human race. We are only one human race. We have a lot of different ethnicities. Uh, we have a lot of different skin colors, hair color, eye color, but we only have one human race. 
And if we can just promote this everywhere and just get rid of the whole issue of white supremacy and white privilege, and uh, that will really open the door for women of color. Uh, we have seen that, you know, in the United States of America, and uh, I, I, I'm sure that you are really proud of our uh, candidate for the vice president, Kamala Harris, right, <laughs> who's a woman of color. But uh, we have to get rid of the racism in our society and, of course, the, uh, the sexism also so that, so that feminists and women of color can start taking their place and taking their leadership. And you have seen in the United States of America, we are so proud because so many of our movements that we have right now, like Black Lives Matter, uh, the, the um, Me Too movement, uh, you know, uh, these, these are, these are um, movements that have been started by, by, by Black women. And so it really shows that we... As, as women of color, that we have a lot of leadership that we can offer the world, but we just got to be given the opportunity. And I'm glad to see that you are one of those that is leading us and in, in able to do this. OK, so I'm going to ask you a question now. Rim. So activism is so personal and it requires a real passion for change. So can you share one story, experience or a moment that kept you motivated this year? And I know that you have been gone, gone through a lot. I know what has happened in your city, the devastating explosion uh, that had lasting and still has lasting consequences, both economic and political, and I'm sure very personal. So that's probably a hard question for you to answer, but give us your best. <laughs> yes, um, indeed, it is very hard. And especially because I truly believe this year was extremely difficult on all levels. It started the revolution, the time where we saw that we have a potential to change our country and to make history and to reclaim our identity and the fact that we are proud to be Lebanese. But then lots of stuff happened. Lots of crises uh, destroyed our hope in our country. And the final straw was the explosion. It is very hard uh, and it hurts and it's it just hurts to say that, but what kept me motivated is the fact that I don't have the privilege anymore. I don't have the choice to take actions, to be activists. This is my responsibility. Seeing my country being destroyed, I cannot stand anymore to see that I won't have a future in this country. And so I still remember the day after the explosion, when in Lebanon we had a very big protest, this was one of the times I felt the most empowered. But I felt like our anger is valid. And for the first time, we're all united and we know who is our enemy. It hurts even more to know that um, most probably next year I won't stay in Lebanon. And so I kind of have a timeline of one year before leaving for college to make a change and to see Beirut and Lebanon on its feet before leaving, and I keep repeating this to myself, um, there's a French uh, quote that says, um, partir, c'est la promesse de revenir. Leaving is the promise of coming back. And so even if I left Lebanon, I know pretty sure that I will come back and I will do something for my country and I will make this change. And this really motivates me. It's not a, a moment in 2020 or uh, a moment in the history of my country is just being Lebanese, uh, this identity that really pushed me uh, to do the work I'm doing and even to aim for bigger stuff for my country. I want you to tell me, what does that community of, ch of change makers, what does that mean to you? Um, I think one of the things that I'm extremely proud of is the fact that I was able to create a community, um, a community that is much needed in the Arab region, Arab region as you said, um, we don't have this privilege. It's extremely hard for us to organize. It is extremely hard to get started. And so having this community where we look after each other, where we support each other, because we know that together we can make it work. And because we know that even if the system of oppressions are different in our countries, but still they are extremely similar and we should support each other because this is a one unified fight and if a country advanced women's right in the Arab region, then the other country would follow its uh, steps. So um, having this community is a privilege, it is an honor, and I'm extremely grateful for them. 
Well, Rim, I'm 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 actually on another board. Uh, it's called the Feminist Majority Foundation, and uh, we do a lot of international work also. And I would love to maybe invite you to join us with our group also, and uh, we can make that connection. Uh, between the Feminist Majority Foundation, we have our organizations with girls all over the all over the world, and so that we can keep this connection going between us, and so that we can support each other, uplift each other, uh, because we know that yes, we I like to say this, and I'm sure you agree with me. If there is a meeting somewhere in the world, and people are sitting down making important decisions, that unless we have equal numbers of feminists. At that meeting and sitting at that board, they're going to make the wrong decisions. So we're going to continue over there in the Arab world and here in the United States to uh, promote and to uh, grow uh, young women to be our leaders because you are definitely going to save the world and save all of us. So it, it's just been wonderful meeting you. <laughs> it's been wonderful meeting you, and I wish you all the luck in the world. And I hope you wish us luck you because we still have a lot of work to do here in the United States, and we're not there yet, but we're all working on it. Thank you so much. It it really means a lot, and especially coming from you. Thank you so so much. And I also would take this opportunity to to thank Melissa, to thank every single person, uh, and family member of Girl Up for their help, their support, for being part of this journey. I wouldn't be able to do this without their support. Uh, I want to also take the chance to thank uh, and express my gratitude to Girl Up Lebanon and Girl Up um, Arab World. Thank you all for everything. And I know this discussion doesn't stop here. The change will happen, but it would take time. So please keep this discussion happening. Keep reaching out if you need anything and make sure to follow and keep an eye on Girl Up because we're doing much bigger things. Thank you so much for this conversation. It is honor. I am extremely grateful to be on this call with you. Thank you. Thank you, Ribbon. I also want to thank Girls Up uh, for including me in this wonderful conversation that we're having today. Uh, when we make these connections, it's so important. We know that we live in a global community. Unfortunately, uh, we don't often get the opportunity to talk to somebody uh, on the other side of the world like we're doing today. But I know what it goes up has so much vision and so much. That, and part, so part of that, that vision, of course, is to see how we can really grow and uplift young women here in the United States and, and around the world. So I am so grateful to be included in this conversation. And I guess and I do want to say, Rem, I want to teach you one word in Spanish. And uh, here in the United States, we we have a slogan, which, by the way, I invented, <laughs> but it's called "Yes, We Can." Uh, President Obama used it in his campaign, and in Spanish, it's "Sí si se puede," which means not only "Yes, I can," but it also means "Yes, we can." And I'm sure that getting young girls and girls all over the world that we together are going to make the changes and we're going to get the kind of social justice, racial justice, economic justice for women and for young girls everywhere. So, si se puede, and thank you, Rim, I love you. Thank you so much, it means a lot.